Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a very educational and informative video all on hot tent wood stoves and which one is best for you. So let's get right into it. Alright, so to get things started, I'm going to be breaking this video up into chapters because there is a ton of information that needs to be covered in this video. We're going to be talking about stove sizes, materials, tent choices, outside temperatures, fuel sources, all kinds of useful information for anybody who's interested in hot tent camping. So my suggestion is grab a hot cup of coffee because this is going to be a lengthy one. Let's get it started. We're gonna start off with what is on the table. I'm going to identify each wood stove to put a name to it, and we'll take things from there. All right, so I'm gonna start on this side with the smaller of the stoves. This is the Timberwolf stove. It is a titanium stove. It's my signature Lone Wolf 902 wood stove, and it is a very, very nice choice. Next to that, we have a T1 Mini. Now this is a T1 Mini regular. There are no side glass windows, and we're gonna be talking a lot about that shortly. Next to it, we have another T1 Mini. This one does have the side glass options. On top, we have the Pamali Traveler stove. This is a non-folding titanium stove. Coming over to some of the medium-sized stoves, this is a T1 stove, a T1 regular. No side glass, only the front glass. Next to that, we have a T1 with a special edition. So this is the Woods Night Edition. There are graphics on the side and it does have side glass windows. We'll have a closer look at all of these in, in much more detail as the video gets more in depth. Over here, we have the T-Brick and the T-Brick Ultra attachment. So this is a two tier stove. You can use it with just the bottom tier or stack it for a double tier. Very interesting stove. Next to that, we have the largest of the titanium wood stoves. This is the T-Brick Ultra. I'm gonna get lost in names today. So this is the T-Brick Ultra wood stove. It is a very large titanium wood stove and it holds its own in size and, uh, and performance. Moving to the front of the table, we do have two stainless steel stoves followed by another titanium wood stove. The wood stove down on that far side is a pre-production model of the Tysoka. So that has a bottom oven in it and it is a wood stove on top. You can also remove the bottom and just use it as a wood stove by dropping the top onto the legs. So it's a multi-use stove, much like the T-Brick and the, the T-Brick um, attachment here. I'm gonna get lost in names, like I was saying, there's a lot of stuff to cover here. Down here, we do have the stainless steel dweller stove. This is a very nice stove that is going in my truck and that's basically where it lives in my hot truck setup. And then over here, we have the Arokin, which is the other stainless steel stove. As you guys probably put together already, these are all from Pomali, and we're gonna talk on that in a little bit as well. All right, so the first thing we're gonna to touch on in chapter one is going to be big tent versus small tent. This seems to be the most common question around hot tenting is, you might have a large tent, you're more looking for a larger wood stove to heat that tent, or maybe you have a smaller tent and you're looking for more of a smaller stove to heat that tent. Well, the truth is a large stove can actually be very beneficial in a small tent and vice versa. A small stove can actually be very beneficial in a large tent as well. And we're gonna talk about the reasons why. All right, so talking about small tents, over here, as I mentioned earlier, we do have our smaller stoves. I'm gonna move the Traveler stove off to the side or maybe just kind of set it down here for now, just for demonstrational purposes. So over here, we have four small stoves. I do have another Timberwolf here that is flat packed. It just doesn't have the glass sides like the one up here does. So there's really no point in setting it up, but it does come with glass or without. Now talking about these smaller stoves. So for this instance, I'm gonna take a Timberwolf and we're gonna place it up top. And then I'm gonna take a T1 stove and we're gonna place it up top. So you guys can clearly see the size difference is generally in the length of the stove. There are other minor differences in, uh, in dimensions between the two stoves. And I will mention I have reviews on every single stove on the table, except for that brand new beauty down there, which is a prototype. So shh, secret, you never saw that. So the, the pre-production model is there. I will have the finalized version shortly and I will have a review on that as well. 
But if you guys are looking for more information, I will put my gear review playlist down in the description. You guys can navigate your way over to all the wood stoves for individual reviews if you're interested. So back to the size. A small stove is going to require more cutting of firewood because it needs to be shorter in length. A larger stove is going to require less wood cutting because it can be longer in length. So that's a pro and a con depending on which way you look at it. Now this long wood stove being a larger stove can heat a small tent very nicely. It can also fit inside of a one to two person teepee style tent and it offers more cooking room. Whereas the Timberwolf and the T1 mini stoves, they don't have as much length on the top. So your cooking area is a little bit less. However, your interior space in the tent is going to be more. Now talking about the large stove, you cannot position this in most single or two person teepee style tents because generally your center pole would be about here. So you would actually have to turn the wood stove on the side. Whereas the Timberwolf or the T1 minis, you can place in this orientation and have the center pole here. And then you could be sleeping on this area, giving you easy access to the door to load the wood stove throughout the night. You can also turn it on its side if you want to have a good look at some of these glass windows. And I do apologize, every stove here is totally dirty as I use all of my gear. So I did not have a chance to clean anything. I figured we'd just wing it today. So a small stove such as the Timberwolf or the T1 Mini can actually heat a four to six person teepee very nicely however you're going to be loading it more often so a lot of people think that you need a large stove to heat a large tent that's actually not entirely true it is up to a certain size of tent but we're talking our maximum size of tent being six person tp and the smallest being a one to two person a large stove and a small stove will work totally fine it depends what you're going to be doing inside of that tent are you hiking in are you driving in and we're going to talk more about that in a little bit but a small stove can definitely be used in a large tent and vice versa you can even fit the t-brick ultra this gigantic wood stove inside of a one to two person TP. And what that does is it gives you the option to not load it as often because you can have a small fire in a large firebox, or you can have a small firebox and have a large fire, vice versa. So you don't have to load this stove full of firewood. You can have a small fire inside of it and hold the hot air and have more room on top for cooking, a larger glass window, and there are benefits with the glass as well that we're gonna to touch on shortly. So large stoves can go in small tents, small stoves can go in large tents. It totally depends on what your needs are. All right, so let's talk about glass versus no glass. So you'll notice a lot of these stoves have glass panels. The T-Brick Ultra has a very large glass panel on the side of the stove. The other side is solid. We've got a T1 up here with three. We got one on the front, two side glass panels with obstructed view. So it is kind of titanium and glass. And I'll get more into that in a second. The Traveler has a large side glass. And then we have stoves that have no side glass, such as the T1 Mini up here. Also with the Timberwolf, no side glass. So what are the benefits with the glass? First off, it is tempered stove glass. It is made to be very strong. It is the same grade of glass that is in wood stoves in your home, cabin, sailboat, wherever you're at. It is very, very strong glass. And I, knock on wood, have never had to replace any glass in all of my wood stoves. And I've actually dropped these a number of times and been very lucky and not had anything break. So they are very, very strong. Now, what is the benefit of the glass? It's not just for monitoring the, the fire inside the stove because I can clearly see inside when I need to load the stove. So that's a benefit not having to open and shut the door all the time, which is why a lot of these stoves have glass in the front. So you can visually see, even these stainless steel ones down here, you can visually see what's happening inside of the stove. You know when to load it and when not to load it. You know if you shut your draft all the way down too far and you can see the fire kind of snuffing out, you know you might have to open the damper or the draft and adjust from there. But one really important thing is heat transfers way better through the glass than it does through the solid panel. So that's a big game changer for a lot of people. And we're gonna talk more about that with a couple of specific stoves that I'm gonna set up here and touch more on the heat transfer.
All right, so I picked three stoves here. We've got the T-Brook Ultra, we've got the T1 Woods Night Edition, and we've got my Timberwolf stove. Now, all of these have side glass options. The T-Brook Ultra has a side glass option on one side, and it has a solid panel on the other side. The T1 Woods Night Edition has two glass side panels. However, it is semi-obstructed with this titanium graphics that's been put in there. So it's about 50% glass, 50% titanium. And then the Timberwolf is all glass on both sides and the front as well as the other stoves. So what is the benefit of this? Well, this stove is very large. It has a very large window. And like I touched on earlier, I said the heat transfers through the glass much better than it does out through the titanium sheet itself. And keep in mind, heat rises, so all of these stoves are going to be very hot on the top side, but on the sides, it's where things kind of get interesting. So with the Timberwolf, this is a 0.6 millimeter thick titanium. These are one millimeter thick titanium, okay? So this being a side glass option, there is more heat transfer that comes out the sides as it has windows on both sides. If I were to switch to a stove that only had a glass panel on one side, even this Traveler stove, here's a solid panel, the glass is on the other side. What I would want to do primarily is if I'm looking for more heat, I would orientate the stove with the window pointing towards my body, especially with this guy, because there's a lot of heat that transfers out through that glass, and it's very, very warm. Now, if you have a solid panel, maybe you don't require a lot of heat, and you want a little bit more light, then you can rotate the stove to take the benefit of the glass, letting out a lot of light inside of the tent, and shield yourself from a lot of heat. Now, keep in mind, these are still going to heat a tent, all of them with or without glass. It's just this glass is basically a window of heat coming right at you. This stove puts out a ton of side heat. So does the Traveler. Now, there is one more thing with that. This particular stove has a solid panel on the other side. However, this is a double walled panel. The Timberwolf over here with the non-glass, when it, uh, this guy right here, it is a solid panel, it's only one layer. The Traveler is a solid panel, it's not a double wall. With the T-Brick Ultra, it is a double wall panel, so you're getting even less side heat transfer. I can hold my hand about two millimeters away from this when it's burning red hot and it won't burn my hand at all as soon as i put it next to the glass it's ridiculously hot so this stove being a double wall design is something to think about if you're looking for side heat transfer or you're looking for more top heat or you're looking for the heat from the side glass so that glass does have a benefit by letting out a lot of light and a lot of heat all right so now we're coming into the part where we discuss steel versus titanium so I have a stainless steel stove here and one other here, and of course everything else is titanium. Well, what are the main benefits? So there is cost. Typically titanium stoves are gonna be higher in cost due to materials. Titanium is an expensive material. Stainless steel is rather affordable. So these generally are a little bit lower in cost than the titanium, but keep in mind your shipping fees, if they're not already rolled into the stove cost, the shipping fees may be higher because this is coming in at about 20 to 22 pounds. These guys are coming in between three and five pounds, depending on the model. So they are very heavy, these are very light. Now titanium has some amazing properties of not rusting, even though we can argue stainless steel won't rust either. The titanium will not rust and it cools down very, very quickly. That's the biggest point I wanna put out here is these stainless steel stoves, they hold heat. Now there is a myth to go along with this. While yes, it is true stainless steel of thickness. So this is, I believe four, four millimeters thick of stainless steel, four or five millimeters thick on the top plate. And then the sides I believe are three. This is one millimeter thick titanium all the way around as most of these stoves are. The stainless steel will hold more heat However, the myth is a stainless steel stove will hold heat and continue heating the tent. That is totally false. The tent is not insulated. And I can assure you, when the fire goes out, whether it's in a titanium stove, a big stove, a small stove, a steel stove, whenever the heat is gone, it's getting cold. You're gonna need a jacket on. So it doesn't matter if you have stainless steel, it's not gonna retain enough heat to heat the square footage of even a two person tent. As soon as that fires out, you're back to being in winter, back to being cold. 
And we're gonna touch on that in a little bit as well because there is another fact I wanna point out about that. But the stainless steel stoves take longer to cool down. They are a little bit easier to cook on because they do retain a lot of heat as it is thicker steel. The titanium usually has hot spots which are generally right in front of the, the chimney pipe. That's the hottest point because everything's going out there. But I find with the stainless steel stoves, they get a nice even heat and where they are thicker on the top, they do generate and hold a lot more heat than the titanium does. And like I said, them being more cost effective, that may be a, an option for choosing a stove. Also, these are not going to be hikeable. You're not gonna be carrying this in your backpack. These guys, absolutely. These guys, definitely not. So as I stated before, this is basically made for my truck. It lives in my truck. This guy also goes in my truck, but I use it when I'm tent camping outside of the truck. Sometimes I bring the titanium guys, depends whatever I'm doing on that trip, but stainless steel stoves, there are some pros and cons. Those are some to think about. All right, so what kind of fuel are you gonna be putting inside of your wood stove? Now, most of the time we're gonna be dealing with hardwood or softwood, even sometimes some of those store-bought bio bricks or fire logs. Whatever you're gonna be putting into your stove is going to have a massive effect on how much heat it outputs, how fast it's going to burn, and whatnot. Now, I will say these larger stoves, cutting firewood in the woods, it's nice to cut longer pieces and less frequent. Rather than the smaller stoves, you're gonna be cutting more pieces of wood as they are smaller. However, they have their benefit in weight savings and size, and we've already touched on some of that. So you gotta look at what you're gonna be burning inside of your stove, hardwood or softwood. Hardwood is gonna spit out less embers, less chances of burning your tent material. Softwood is going to burn very fast and it's gonna spit a lot of embers out the top and it's gonna be more of a dirty burn, whereas the hardwood will be low and slow. So you wanna think about that and then going into some of the store-bought products, those bio bricks or fire logs, you wanna make sure that they don't really have any chemicals inside of them. If you are running a glass window, it's not gonna damage the glass, but it will foul the glass and turn it black and then you're basically not gonna be able to see out of it if you're burning any kind of petroleums or binders in that wood source. So I highly recommend seeking dry hardwood if you can, some oak, some maple, whatever's in your area. And that usually burns the best and keeps these windows really nice and clean. And even if they do blacken, once you get the stove burning hot and you fiddle around with the damper and you get everything set right, that will actually burn off all the carbon deposit inside of the glass within about 30 to 40 minutes. I find mine blackens up when I light the stove. After about 40 minutes, it's totally burned off and I get a nice clear picture of the fire again. So you wanna think about the wood sources that you have in your area. What are you gonna be burning? Is it gonna take up time cutting long pieces of softwood? Is it gonna take up time cutting a lot of really dense hardwood to be this small? That's something to think about your fuel source. All right, so talking about loading frequency of your wood stove, there are a few options here that I've got laid out. So first off, these on the table are all folding minus this guy. So this is non-folding, it is fixed in that shape. So that may kind of uh, help you decide which one might be better for you. Uh, and I'm not just talking about Pomali brands. Now these are all Pomali stoves, but this is transferable to all wood stoves. I have literally owned Winterwell, I've owned Nortent, I've owned Seek Outside, Light Outdoors, Lux. I've owned all the brands out there for titanium wood stoves and I've landed on Pomali. They're thicker, they're stronger, they last a lot longer. My personal choice is Pomali, but all of this stuff that I'm talking about is transferable with any brand. It doesn't matter the brand, this is just my personal choice. So talking about loading frequency. Now obviously the smaller stove over here, the Timberwolf and the T1 Mini, which I've got down here, they are a shorter stove and they're not very tall, making them very easy to backpack and hike in, which is the reason why I really like them on solo trips. However, if I'm going to be camping, I may sacrifice a little bit extra weight in carrying it if I'm going to be away from camp. So if I'm going hunting or fishing or I'm going to be hiking trails throughout the day and I want to make sure that my tent's warm, that my stuff inside doesn't freeze up, um, or maybe I have a fire when I get back for whatever reason, a larger stove may be the option because you can actually fit more wood in here and load less often. Or if you do want to sleep during the night and you want the stove burning, you can load longer pieces and more pieces in these stoves than you can these stoves. So these will burn a lot longer and you can fit larger pieces of wood. I mean, the doorway on this guy, you can fit a very large log inside of that 
and we could argue that the uh, the traveler they were probably looking at about two to three inches shorter but we have a very big difference in door diameter so we could fit much more wood in the ultra than we can the traveler so this will burn much longer of course than that because more fuel will fit inside of it so you need to think about that and take that into consideration do you need the long stove for massive wood uh, do you need a taller stove for massive wood capacity or can you get away with one of the smaller options and load it more frequently me personally i never let my wood stove burn while i sleep because I like to do exactly that, sleep. So I don't bother with it, even if I have a large stove, I don't bother loading it You know, every three or four hours. I just go to sleep. I bring a winter sleeping pad and a winter sleeping bag, which I always recommend you do. Never ever rely on a wood stove of any brand to keep you warm all night because anything can happen. Always bring a winter sleeping bag and a winter sleeping pad that is rated to keep you warm without the wood stove. That is the best option, but loading frequency is something to think about. Now, looking down at the uh, the, the dweller, I'm, my names are all messed up today. Looking down at the dweller stove, that is a very unique stove where you don't load it lengthwise, you actually load the pieces widthwise. It's about the same length as a T1 Mini or the Timberwolf, uh, but it has a very large glass window and it's only in the front. So that's a really good stove if you are truck camping and you do happen to have a tent with you to project a lot of the light and a lot of the heat out towards you. And they load in sideways so it burns across. So it's a very unique burn pattern as these typically burn front to back. You are going to have a hot spot and a cold spot in all of these because it is burning from the front draft which is oxygen all the way to the rear, which is the exhaust. So you're gonna have a hot spot in here and a cool spot, leaving a little bit more coals in the stove versus a stove that you're loading directly from the front, like the dweller stove, where it's gonna burn everything. You're only gonna have ashes left. All right, so another thing you need to take into consideration when choosing a tent or a wood stove is landscape and ambient temperatures. Are you going to be in zero degrees Celsius? Are you going to be in negative 20 degrees Celsius? Is your landscape flat and smooth? Is it windy? Is it rocky? Is it going to be ice and snow? You really want to take all of that into consideration because sometimes that'll dictate what type of shelter you can bring with you, whether it's going to be a large tent or a small tent. And that could ultimately define which stove you're going to be bringing a large stove or a small stove now like we covered we can use a large stove and a small tent or a small stove and a large tent there are going to be drastically different obstacles to kind of overcome because if i'm going to be cooking a lot on my stove this is a smaller stove i'm probably going to want a more longer top to cook on especially with this guy you could fit more pans and pots on top of it but like i said landscape is going to be the ultimate benefactor in uh, in deciding where you can camp so if i'm going to be bringing a large tent in a rocky area it's probably not going to be able to set up very easily in that area so i might have to bring a smaller tent that's going to basically narrow down my stove choice more likely probably in this range rather than this range because i'm probably going to want more living space inside of the tent this does fit and it does heat very nicely but you're, you're gonna want a little bit more storage room inside of your tent. So going towards one of the smaller or the medium sized stoves is probably gonna be the better choice. And then temperatures, how often are you gonna wanna load it? Is it gonna be negative 20? Is it gonna be zero degrees? Because if you're in negative 20, this guy is gonna need to be loaded probably every 40 minutes. This guy and this guy could be loaded every two and a half to three hours, depending on fuel source, of course. I burned my timber wolf with very dense oak before for an hour and a half, two hours, and it's been totally warm inside of a two person tent, very hot actually. And I burned these guys in a little bit longer period of time. So we're talking three and a half, four hours with oak inside of it, and it'd be very hot. But you wanna look at your outside temperatures. Ideally, what temperatures are you gonna be looking at camping in? Do you really need a lot of heat in the stove? Do you need the tent really hot? Or do you need a longer cook surface? Do you need a smaller cook surface, a smaller stove? Do you wanna cut less wood? You really need to think about your needs and what's gonna benefit you the most during your camping trip. Even down here with the steel stoves, you're gonna be driving in a truck. Are you gonna have room to set that up? Is it gonna be worth bringing that? Uh, there's a lot to think about. So. 
definitely think about the temperatures and practicality of how hot do you need the tent to really be. You're going to have a winter sleeping bag, a pad. Do you really need it roasting hot or do you just need it big enough to cut the dampness and basically strip you down to a t-shirt negative 20, which all of these will do, especially this guy in a small tent. This thing gets very, very hot. Even the T1 Mini, which is basically the same size as the Timberwolf. These guys will strip you down to a t-shirt and boxer shorts, negative 20 degrees Celsius in a two-person tent very quickly. They get very hot, so don't let the size of the smaller stoves uh, underestimate what they can do. They take up less room, they're lighter to carry, they pack down very small, but they do need to be loaded a little bit more frequently. So take that into consideration, temperature and landscape. So moving on to another category that I like to speak about is how many people are you going camping with? Are you going to be by yourself or are you going to be with two people, maybe three people? And this kind of goes along with the size of your tent and all along with the loading frequency, the cooking surface, all of that is always involved in deciding which stove is going to work. But looking at these stoves, you really get to think how many people are going to be with you? Because if you're going to be bringing a two to four person size tent and you're kind of left with a decision to make, is one person going to carry the stove? Is the other person going to carry the tent? Or can you split the weight in between people? Because if a larger stove is going to be kind of a, a gray area of you don't want to carry that much weight, well, maybe you can split the stove down and share the components of the stove where this is a flat packing stove. You could take these apart and share parts. So one person can carry the top, the other person can carry the sides, the other person can carry the bottoms, and so on and so forth. Now, if you're camping by yourself, you're going to have to carry everything totally by yourself. Now, one other thing to think about Again, coming over here to the Traveler stove, this guy doesn't come apart. Even though it's incredibly lightweight, it does not come apart. So you can hike with this, and I have. Uh, basically put things inside of it, and then what I like to do is take my sleeping bag and stuff it down along the side of it, protecting the side glass window. And it actually fits in the backpack. It doesn't take up any extra room because it's fully stuffed with my pots, my pans, cooking food, change of clothes, all that stuff. Uh, so you can hike with that, but it's a defined shape. So you really want to think about that. How many people are going with you? Can you split the load and the components? Also, when you're inside of your tent, how much room do you need inside of the tent? Because a larger stove is going to take up more room. Maybe you still need a large stove, but the length is too long. Maybe you can go with this guy and gain some size in height and still save a little bit of floor space in the tent. Or maybe it's better off to go with a smaller stove and kind of huddle around the stove and, uh, and one person load it, kind of take shifts throughout the night. That is something to think about. How many people are going to be in the shelter? How many people are going to be able to carry the components? And so on and so forth. All right, so now we come into one of my favorite parts is cooking. So when choosing a stove, if you're going to be using it for cooking, some of these things might sway your decision. So starting over here with the T-Brick Ultra, I have attached one of the side shelves. Now you can attach one to the other side as well. I have it right here on this stove permanently or temporarily, sorry. Uh, and then we have the additional legs, which are also titanium. So these can be set up on either side of the stove. I can have one here, one on the other side and use it as basically a shelf to warm food, put a pot and pan, hang gloves and socks, which I typically do to dry during the winter time. You can hang stuff from these racks and they work really, really well. You can use one or two, it's totally up to you. So this does add to the cooking experience. Talking about the stove itself, we don't have a terribly long cooktop, but it is a generous size. You could fit about probably six, 750 mil titanium pots up here at the same time. There is a lot of cooking space up top and storage space down on the sides. Now coming over to the T-Brick Ultra, of course, this being the longest stove of all of them here, you have a ton of cooking space. And keep in mind, this is going to be the hottest area right near the damper. This will be more of the cooler area. Now, some of these stoves have an internal damper, which is removable. This is going to either help or basically inhibit you from cooking. I often do not use these because I find the stoves can open up to full throttle with these not installed by opening the draft and the damper. However, if you do install this, it basically locks the stove into a slow and low burner. This will distribute the heat throughout the top with this installed. Basically, it goes inside of the stove, it screws on, and uh, it basically sits 
kind of like that actually in this position. So it's underneath kind of as a, as a damper basically. But what'll happen is the heat will distribute through the top of the stove evenly. So I find these are great for cooking. The problem with it is you have to take the top off to take it off or put it on. There's no way to do that while the stove is burning. So that is something to think about. Do you have an internal damper installed? Is it removable such as these ones? This damper or this baffle, I should say, fits inside of this stove. It also fits inside of the T-brick. It doesn't fit inside of the other stove. So that might be a, uh, a determining factor as well. But we do have a lot of real estate up top of this stove. It's massive. You can cook all day. Good for group camps. If you're out overlanding and you guys have a tent set up, this is a good communal stove for everyone to put a pot on top of and cook. There's loads of room here. Now I'm going to skip over this guy because I want to come back to this in a moment. Looking at the Timberwolf. Now, of course, this is a great stove. You could fit probably four 750 ml pots on this. So it is a smaller cook surface. You can certainly cook for one or two people, but if you have four to six people kind of huddling around, you guys are gonna be fighting over the cook surface. So you might wanna go with a larger stove. That's something to think about, but a great option for a solo camp out. Now talking about this stove, this is a pre-release version. This is not the finalized version, which is why I haven't burned inside of it yet. Uh, but it does have the tabs to accommodate for a side rack, such as this. So if I did want to put some food up here or maybe hang some socks and some mittens and dry them out during the day, I can do that. It's also about the same size as a T1. So here I've got a T1. It's basically the same size as a cooktop. So we do have loads of room up top for cooking. But what it also sports is something very, very cool. It has an oven. So the stove bottom, I have it uh, quick disassembled right now. So the finished version of this will be permanently attached when set up in this configuration. I just didn't put on the side brackets to hold it on because I wanted to show this. Uh, but the bottom of the stove is totally a stove and the oven is totally an oven. So if you did want to bring this just as a stove, these side plates actually come off and it actually fell out right there where I don't have the retaining clamps on there. But you can take the walls off, totally off, and the door off. And then the stove sits on top of the plate and it screws there permanently. So it's basically a T1 stove with three glass windows. But here I have it set up with the oven configuration. So you can slide in a pizza, you can do nachos, you can do all kinds of different food options with this, with the oven placed underneath, as opposed to on top of the stove. And this will heat food. I've seen videos and confirmed uh, via photos from Pomali what they've actually cooked inside of this. If you guys are interested in this stove, I will mention, I, I will have the produced model for production uh, probably within a week, and I will do a full testing and review video of it. This one is, uh, it, that's all I'm going to say about it. The finalized version is drastically different from this, but it's, it's the same with the oven. That's all I can say about it for now. But this is another option, having an oven underneath of the stove and then also taking off that accessory and using it just as a T1 sized stove. Now looking down here at the Arokan, the, the stainless steel stove, it also has slide out shelves on either sides. They're elevated up above the stove heat which means it's going to keep pots and pans very warm. And you can also hang clothing, mittens and hats off the sides of that to cook. And that is a stainless steel top of four to five millimeters thick. I'm not totally sure you'll have to check my review on that for the definite number, but that will cook very nice and evenly where it is a thick, even steel plate on top as well as the dweller stove, but that is a smaller cooktop. You're looking at maybe one or two people cooking on that. A couple pots, very small pan. The rest of these stoves, you're basically open up to a skillet and a pot if you want to do bacon on a pan, or if you're just cooking in a pot. There are many options, but with the addition of stoves, larger cooktops, side racks, there are a lot of things to think about. Also, how long are you gonna be staying in that location? Because something like this might be a little overkill if you're only gonna be cooking nachos one time. However, if you're in an area that you're gonna be staying for a week, maybe you're out elk hunting, this might be the ticket right here, having the oven down there to do breads, all kinds of things to cook in the oven, and as well as on top and warm on the side. So you gotta think about cooking. Are you gonna be cooking on the stove or not?
All right, so coming into some of the different stoves here, now that I've got the stainless steel stoves on top of the table, uh, we're gonna talk about false bottoms because a lot of people think that you need a false bottom in these smaller stoves. And some people say, no, it's totally up to you. My personal opinion is these fireboxes are all, even this large guy, they're all rather small in the world of wood stoves and they get incredibly hot, reducing everything into very small coals, if not ash. And they all burn extremely well. Some of these do not come with false bottoms, and that's the reason why, is because they burn extremely hot and totally fine without them. However, there are some models with false bottoms. So what is a false bottom? Well, if I open up the door to the Ultra here, you know, find that tag. If you look into the bottom of the stove, it is totally flat. So there's no raised platform, there's no gap in between the bottom plate and right where the wood sits. It's just a total flat surface. Now if I open up the Traveler door, you guys could probably see in there that there is a little bit of a gap here. It's raised up, so the wood sits on that grill essentially, allowing more oxygen to go underneath of the wood for a hotter, faster burn. Also, the ash will fall through that, giving you a clean surface for wood. Now the Arokan actually has a false bottom stove in it or a false bottom plate inside of it. It is totally stuffed full of stove pipe right now though, so I'm not gonna open it. As well as the Dweller is totally stuffed full of stove pipe, so I'm not gonna open it. But it does have a false bottom inside of it. And this little handle here and this handle way down here are actually two removable ash pans. They totally come out. You could take them out when the, this one you could take out when the door is open. Um, this one, the door has to be open to take it out, but they both have removable ash pans so you can clean it out a little bit easier, where this guy does not. You still have to take it out of the tent, tip it upside down and clean it, but that is something to think about if you are more interested in a false bottom stove. Now, my personal opinion, like I said, you don't need a false bottom. Some people say it burns cleaner. These stoves are so small that it's not gonna be noticeable. You can have a very large stove in your house and we're talking a massive wood stove where a false bottom will actually be beneficial. And to those that really swear by having a false bottom in their stove and saying that it won't work without it, they're probably not running the draft or the damper properly, which is causing less burn and probably using some wet or damp wood because I've used all of my non-false bottom stoves with optimal temperatures or optimal dryness, I should say, with wood and rotating the damper and the draft, you will find and you'll learn what your stove wants. They're all different, but playing around with those settings, you'll find a sweet spot where it likes to burn and it will burn very, very hot. With these false bottoms, I find they burn very, very hot and often it burns your wood up very quickly and you're finding yourself having to damp it down a lot more. So me personally, I don't use false bottoms that often. This stove is permanently fixed in, so I do use it as well as this and as well as this, but there are some stoves where the false bottom is removable and it's uh, basically an option. So that's one thing to think about as well. All right, so moving along here, we're gonna talk about something that's a little bit interesting and just when you thought you figured it out, I'm gonna throw a wrench in your plans because we have a thing that I like to call the heat channel and the frost ring. And this has to do with the tent. And we're gonna move into a little bit more after this, which is gonna even mess you up a lot more. So we have what I refer to as the heat channel. The heat channel is where the heat sits inside of your tent. And the frost ring is where the heat does not sit inside of your tent. So often people that go hot tenting in the winter time, you will find that the bottom portion of your tent, usually about a foot from the ground, is frost, and then it goes into nice dry tent material. Well, that has to do a lot with the height of your stove, as well as a glass panel or non-glass panel. So if you have a shorter wood stove, such as the Timberwolf or the T1 Mini, you are lower to the ground, which means the heat is going to rise off of the stove, at a lower height in the tent. So your frost ring might not be a big old frost ring. It might only be this big because once the heat comes off of the stove, it's then gonna start rising in the tent and it's gonna disperse warming the tent. Now, if you have a very large tent, like a six person TP with a large, we were talking like a 12 foot, 14 foot diameter, um, the heat from a small stove might not reach the outskirts until it's up about two to two and a half feet. 
so your frost ring might become even larger. Now, if you have a very large wood stove in a large tent, obviously the heat's going to reach out. And then with the help of some side glass windows, such as the big side glass here on the Ultra, that'll throw a lot of heat towards the wall and reduce the frost ring in that direction. Now, obviously the height of the stove has a lot to do with that, which is why I position these stoves in this particular order. So the Traveler stove is a rather low squat stove. It's about the same height as the Timberwolf. I wanna say the Timberwolf and the T1 are probably maybe an inch lower. So having these inside of a one to two person tent, there is basically no frost ring. It's reduced to maybe an inch around the very bottom of the tent. Um, and it works really well. With the Traveler stove inside of a one to two person tent where it is elevated a little bit more, it may be a four to five inch frost ring all the way around. However, this stove is larger. It does have a larger side glass. So it tends to throw a lot more heat around. So I don't anticipate the, the frost ring being very large in a one to two person tent. It will grow in a larger footprint tent. And we're gonna talk more about this in a little bit because this is really gonna mess you guys up. Um, but moving to a larger stove, a taller stove, so looking at the Ultra, and we got the T-Brick Max with the attachment, and then we've got the Traveler. So you can see that this is rather low, and then we're stepping up higher, and then we're stepping up really high. So if you place these two stoves in a tent, your frost ring is going to be even higher. Even though it's a larger stove and you think it's going to throw more heat, that's often a misconception because these are taller. It's already heating higher up so the heat usually starts with an inch from the stove well right there we're already over a foot so the frost ring in the tent with this stove is going to be significantly high because the heat channel is going to be up higher and this will be a little bit less the heat channel is still going to be high and so on and so forth so hopefully that makes total sense so you need to think about that both when you're lounging in the tent sitting and when you're laying down in the tent because if I were to lay down next to this wood stove, this stove would be a good three inches above my chest, which puts my body really low into the frost ring. When the fire does burn out, I'm probably going to find myself really, really, really cold. Even with the stove burning on max, I might find myself being cold. Now, the interesting thing is it has a very large window on the side. So if I were sleeping on the window side, it would throw that heat directly towards my body and that would actually be very hot. As well as this stove, the T-Brick Ultra, it has removable glass panels so I can move them and configure them wherever I want, as long with the, with the solid panels also. So this is a totally customizable stove. This stove as well, I could swap the, the panels over. Um, the T1, you cannot because they are on a hinge system where they fold up but these sides actually slide in and slide out so you can configure them however you like. So that's another added benefit. But that is something that you really do need to think about is the heat channel. Now, one way you can actually get away from that if you are bringing a large stove or perhaps a taller stove is to simply fold the legs in. So if I were to fold the legs in, this will make the stove on this particular model where it's not a total square, it'll make it a little bit rocky because it does have these slanted sides but this is just for an example let's get that door shut if i were to place it down onto the ground now you can see that we're really reducing that frost ring and if i were to lay down next to this i bet my chest would actually be higher than the top so now my top portion is actually beginning to be in the heat channel which is going to be a very warm night's sleep now the problem with doing this is now it's going to be on the ground so you want to position this on four rocks or stones if you can, uh, just to elevate it a bit so it's not going to scorch the ground. If you do put a fire cloth underneath of it, it is still going to scorch the fire cloth because it will get very, very hot. And even though the fire cloth is fire retardant, it will still scorch it and leach off uh, fumes and, and nasty smells. So this is just a demonstration of the height. That's all I want to point out is the height of the stove will depict where your frost ring is and the diameter of your tent, your footprint, will increase or decrease that frost ring as well. So that's definitely a huge thing to think about and that's something that I consider when I choose a stove to go out hot tenting is where's my frost ring and where's my heat channel going to be? Now I'm really gonna mess you up with this next part. All right, so now that I've just explained the frost ring and the heat channel, we're gonna mess things up with the shape of your shelter. 
So this is also a massive, massive thing to think about when going hot tenting and choosing a stove and a climate, outside temperature, all that stuff. What is the shape of your tent? Now most tents are typically traditionally shaped as a teepee style tent. And the reason why that is typically a hot tent shape is because the bottom offers a large footprint area and the shape is conical. So what happens is the heat rises into this very, very small point and you can only cram so much hot air in there before it slowly starts to seep down along the walls. And the stove is gonna be pulling in oxygen, usually from around the bottom of the tent and it's going to pull it in it's going to push hot air up so the tp picture when you're sitting up in it the shelter's coning in so your head is up and your chest is up in the heat area and it gets very hot so it's a very constrictive shelter for heat and uh, and keeping it hot now when you roll into a dome shaped tent everything changes the frost ring can be somewhat higher the heat channel can actually be somewhat colder because of the general shape. Now, when you roll into a dome shape, the heat is rising up, but you now have more roof area. So a teepee has a very small roof area. A dome shelter has massive heat area. So when the heat rises, it disperses more and it comes into contact with the cold fabric more and it cools down. There is a benefit to this because as a teepee shelter will get roasting hot very, very quickly, even with a smaller stove, it'll get very hot because it's constricting that heat while you're sitting up. And when you lay down, it's not gonna be as hot unless you have a very large stove throwing heat out the sides. With a dome shelter, it's more of a mild heat. Now you can still get them very hot with these small stoves by loading them up and it can, it can get very hot in there. But generally with a dome shaped shelter, the heat rises and it disperses around it and your side walls are generally more vertical more so than a teepee so the heat actually distributes through the tent way different than a teepee style tent which may result into more or less frequent wood loading depending on the size of your wood stove and the height of your wood stove as well that could all come into changing things and uh, and basically altering your plans whether you want to take a small stove or a large stove anything can happen and uh, just consider the shape of your tent to be one of those decisions to keep in mind while choosing a wood stove all right so wrapping things up that was a lot of information to throw at you guys i do have a three-part series on how to get started in hot tent camping as well i'll put the link to that down in the video description as well as the individual reviews so you guys can navigate your way to that the three-part series has to do with one part safety second part tents third part stoves so i do touch on a lot of the stoves but I cover a little bit of different information. So this video was primarily focused on what stove is right for you. And I think that's what most people need to think about is what stove is going to be right for you. Now, unfortunately, there is no perfect stove for every situation as I've already covered the height, the length, the compactness, the weight, all of those factors are gonna come into making your decision for your stove. But I think you should focus more on what are you going to be doing and how often are you going to be going out? So if you're going to be shelling out, you know, almost $1,000 on a wood stove where you can get away with a smaller wood stove and load it more frequently rather than having a large capacity of wood, that might be the option to go because if you're not going to use it that often, it might not be a, a benefit to spend that kind of money. But the other thing to that to kind of keep in mind is a saying that I like to use is buy once, cry once. If you do buy a very expensive, high quality stove, even though it's a lot of money, you're never gonna have to replace it and you're never gonna have to upgrade it. So that's kind of the scenario with buy once, cry once. It is an investment and hot tenting, unfortunately, is not very cheap. It is a very expensive hobby, both tents and stoves. So that is something to think about, but I hope everything that I covered in this video was useful to you guys. And if there's anything that I missed or I kind of didn't touch on enough, drop it down in the comment section and I'll be sure to get back to you guys. But definitely a lot to think about. The one thing I will leave you with is get the stove that is right for you, not right for your friends or whoever you're going camping with. Purchase what is gonna be best for you and you'll get the most use out of it. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. I've gotta get all of this stuff cleaned up and get inside. The sun is setting. So peace out guys and I'll see you in the next video.